Okay, we're gonna get started. Um, thanks, thanks again for being here. Um, I'm just inviting people in as they as they show up. Um, but we want to make sure we get through. We got a lot of stuff to cover today, talking about goals and really making them actionable. This is something that's come up quite a bit. Um, just working with solo creators and small teams in terms of really how to do this effectively in Notion. So. Uh, definitely was the most excited about this topic going into the year in terms of creating course uh, materials and just, um, you know, diving deeper into the topic. But uh, we're going to jump in and get started. A um, few norms just so that we're on the same page. Um, nothing crazy, but if you've got any questions or comments throughout anything that we're covering, um, whether it's, um, you know, going from goals to objectives to key results, or when we get into the Notion example, uh, just feel free to add those questions in the, in the chat. And, you know, we'll, we'll go back to those at the very end. Or if you, you know, wanna wait and, um, you know, unmute and uh, dive into any questions that you have, whether they're related to goals or just working in Notion, uh, we're gonna have some time to do that as well. Um, so, uh, nice to see you all. So a little bit about myself, just want to introduce, uh, I'm David DeCespedes. I'm a, an educator and um, Notion consultant. And as of actually like a few hours ago, uh, just became a Notion certified consultant, um, which is a program that, they, that they've had going for, I think about a year or so, and is a process where you submit a portfolio of work. Um, you, <laughs> thank you, Amanda. You um, just show you know, proof of work. There's an exam. Uh, there was a lot more questions on formulas than I was expecting. So that was a little bit of a challenge, but very excited to be part of that community. I think there is roughly about 45 or so um, Notion certified consultants. And I think with the growth of Notion, that's going to be a huge, um, and I'm sure a growing community as well. So if you've got any questions or curiosities about that process, uh, definitely let me know as well. Um, so uh, one thing I want to asterisk is that I'm uh, not really a productivity guru. Um, I, the content that I like to focus on and that I like to learn about and share and work with creators and small teams on is applying specific productivity strategies in Notion, um, how to take business practices that are commonplace or growing or about innovation and figuring out how to get the most out of Notion and start to surface information in new and exciting ways that we haven't been able to do as easily before or without custom software. So that's probably one of the biggest reasons why I'm so into Notion and have been for a few years now. Um, a little bit of background on myself, kind of have like a little bit of an eccentric background, but I uh, studied and practiced in architecture professionally uh, for a few years before moving into starting a digital agency in New York called Superform, which uh, ran for about four years, doing mostly uh, branding and UX um, visual design work. And as of late, probably over the last like a year and a half, I've really gotten into uh, what I call designing mental spaces. So frameworks and systems largely living in Notion that allow us and allow teams to work more effectively, work more focused, prevent, you know, overstressing or overwhelm and really, um, you know, elevate our work uh, through certain practices that, that have been proven to work. So uh, kind of a, kind of a wild background there. And, you know, specifically with Notion, uh, my focus has been helping creators leverage specific productivity strategies that is really about unlocking creative genius. So uh, we kind of create the systems, the, the uh, very systematic work to allow for a lot of this creative work to happen and to flourish. So uh, that's where I think I get most excited about this work. Um, what are we getting into today? All right, so we're talking about uh, first posing the question, why are we uh, talking about goals in the first place? Why is this the first webinar live session of the year? Uh, getting into this formula that I've been uh, working on and working with uh, and jumping into Notion and taking a look at 
how this applies going from these big ambitious goals that we all have to day-to-day -day actions and uh, planning, reflection, prioritizing projects, things like that. So uh, trying to get through you know, that funnel and going from that 30,000 foot view down to the ground level and what that might look like in Notion. Um, also, uh, set sharing a course that's launching in about eight days, which is also on this very topic and what's included in that course and just providing some information on, on that, which I'm super excited about. It's kind of one of my, one of my goals for the year, followed by uh, some Q and A. This is going to be pretty open-ended, anything from goals to actions to, you know, notion related questions. Um, but when, before we jump into the why goals, I do want to pose this question um, to you all, but very curious, like what brought you here today? Is it learning notion? Is it about setting goals? Is it a little bit of both? Just to get a sense of uh, where everybody's coming from. So we'll take a few moments uh, to get some, get some responses there, and then we'll jump in. Just gonna check the waiting room, make sure it's good there. Cool. Take another few seconds on that and get going. Okay, so we've got uh, a little bit of a mixed bag. Um, both we've got, <laughs> this is almost split exactly down the middle. So um, this is great though. I'll make sure to um, dive into, into goal setting if you're either new to Notion or um, just don't, not using it at all. I'm thinking this is still going to be a, applicable, you know, whether you're using a different platform. And if you are using Notion, we'll take a look at how that works in this template that I'll share with everybody um, toward the very end. And there's going to be a follow-up email at the end of the session with the template um, attached. So it's kind of like a leaner version of a template that I made called Manifest which um, is really a kind of a holistic productivity system. And this is really just more focused on uh, goal setting, objectives, key results, that type of thing. All right, so why are we talking about goals? Um, just a little bit of a background and behind the scenes. Over the past like six months, I've been working with uh, creators via workshops and have, have also had the opportunity to work with uh, about three uh, startups and small teams that have been mostly migrating to Notion from different platforms and trying to organize all of their information processes as they're growing. So that's been a super exciting opportunity because I get to see how individuals are using Notion professionally, how teams are using it, and really the nuances around um, how people are collaborating in Notion. And one of the biggest common threads whether it's been with creators or small teams has been really trying to use a tool like Notion to not only set goals, but develop practices to measure data, measure progress, um, measure shortfalls, if there are some at the monthly or quarterly level to really get more insight and more visualization into what kind of progress is happening and really getting a detailed view into that. And that's been a pretty eye-opening experience because I kind of came into these projects more thinking about project management and, and organizing, okay, we've got these projects, we've got these tasks, uh, they're assigned to these team members. And through that process, it's been a lot more of a focus to think about uh, setting goals, whether it's individually or as a team, and setting up processes to, to kind of track that progress. So, um, that's the impetus here, and I'm hoping that, uh, you know, content like this and the course as well really um, take some of these, you know, winning business practices and make them available to, to more creators and to more um, small teams as well. So uh, a little background there. 
Also want to bring up just kind of doing research over the past couple of months, some, you know, common mistakes that tend to uh, be, uh, that tend to happen, especially at the early stages of setting goals. So uh, Benjamin Hardy and Dan Sullivan wrote a book and, and I'll add a, I wrote a quick medium post on this, just kind of takeaways from this research, but uh, focused on what they call focusing on the gain versus the gap. So meaning we tend to, we tend to look at the gap between our current selves and our future selves and less so on the gain or the progress that we've made over the past, say like three months, six months, or, you know, years. And, you know, by focusing on that gap, we're, um, you know, always, like the goalpost is always shifting further and further backward because we keep on, you know, updating our goals or, um, you know, want to move further with these goals. So focusing on the gain, you know, celebrating that progress through, you know, through data, through visuals. Um, also skipping reflection. I'm kind of guilty of this as well, especially at the start of the year, you know, this kind of time period where we, we, want to look forward and we want to imagine, you know, these futures, like, what am I, where am I going to be a year from now? But uh, without that reflection piece to really um, take the time to look at what was accomplished, you know, in the past, let's say the past year, uh, what goals we set out at the beginning of the year that we didn't meet or that really weren't prioritized or weren't much of a factor in the year and using reflection to set up goals moving forward. So um, that's that's definitely a big one. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, people assume that their goals are, are too ambitious. And I, and I think it's actually the reverse that goals are not ambitious enough. And if we set goals that are um, easily achievable or attainable, we, we almost kind of lose our motivation because we know that that's gonna happen, you know, at some point or another with, not like optimal effort. So we'll get into um, ambitious goals versus diving into the details via objectives, but uh, something there. And then the last one is confusing goals with objectives, which we'll get into, you know, especially when we look at the uh, notion template. So um, goals and objectives. Uh, I think when I when I started setting up personal systems and um, team systems for my my company back in 2017 2018, uh, this was kind of a mental I had a mental blocker with goals and objectives. Like, what is the difference? Why not just have goals? And why do I need two categories of um, you know milestones? And <clears throat> the the reason for this is uh, there's two parts. Number one, goals. Um, you know, we've it, shout out to anybody who's used the, the smart goals framework, uh, which I've used in the past. Also, uh, one of the limitations with that type of goal setting is it could be uh, a little too attainable and not ambitious enough. So really thinking through goals of like, what is an ambitious, um, you know, if you've heard of BHAGs, the big, hairy, audacious goal, um, and not so much thinking about the details or the execution yet because objectives allow us to get into detail. We're looking at quarterly objectives in the examples coming up and allow us to say, set a time, in this case, a quarter. So from January to the end of March. And from there, be able to zoom in a little bit further to prioritize what projects are we focusing on, um, in what order, and what um, numbers or what metrics need to be met to um, to fulfill that objective that moves us closer to the goal. So kind of a hierarchy there. If, uh, if you've read, um, you know, if, give me a thumbs up if, you, if you're a James Clear reader, uh, but this quote, um, at least I see it all over the place, but it's super influential for me and for the work in terms of breaking down the difference between um, goals and systems and how they work together. And if we think about, you know, goals as the things we want to achieve, systems are processes, um, how we organize information, how we plan and reflect at a weekly or monthly cadence and make sure that the goal is kind of, we're giving the goal some love in terms of continuously working toward the goal and uh, making sure that 
um, if we're if we're not making the progress, we can pivot and we can adjust and make some changes, maybe from quarter one to quarter two or quarter two to quarter three. So um, when we talk about making actionable goals, it's really about thinking ambitious and then also investing the time and energy into how we plan to execute, um, even if we are not going to have 100% of the, the roadmap or the plan in advance going through that process is definitely going to help to get the ball rolling and then also keep up and build momentum through the process. So um, this is the equation that uh, I'm working with for these examples. And I think has been really helpful in terms of we've got goals, don't have to be specific, don't have to be um, you know measurable quite yet. Systems, how are we tracking our progress? Uh, habits in this case, we're looking at a combination of planning up front, maybe it's at the quarterly, monthly, or weekly cadence, and also reflection. We'll take a look at the monthly planning and reflection, just an example of that. And ultimately, to see our progress. Uh, what numbers are we hitting? What um, projects are we completing? And how does it align with our plans that we made in advance. So if they're misaligned, if we're, you know, if we're thinking we're going to achieve 12 projects in a quarter and we really only achieve six, um, it might seem like a failure, but if without that planning process, you might've only completed one or two. So um, something to keep in mind there and, you know, take forward as we jump into Notion. Um, so we're going to take a look at what that looks like here. Um, while we're setting up this Notion workspace, I've got another, sorry, I was sharing that, that poll question. If that was taken over your screen, my apologies. Um, in the quick poll question um, for something like a course on tracking your goals in Notion, um, preferences in terms of, do you see yourself taking a self-paced course, a cohort-based course, or neither? Um, specifically related to goals. So kind of curious about that one as well. And then we're gonna set up this Notion space. And can I get a thumbs up if you can see that Notion screen in the chat? So make sure that that's up and running. That would be awesome. All right, thank you, Jose. Sweet, all right, let's get into it. Okay, so um, this is, and again, if you're, if you're not a big Notion user or you maybe just use it for documents, but not full on tracking your entire life. Uh, it's designed to still be still be useful, still applicable in terms of the specific information that we're tracking. So uh, we're going to get into these levels that we talked about earlier and also how they fit into each other when we start to apply related databases. So we're, we're tying these pieces of information together uh, to organize and filter these different pieces of information in more focused ways. And, you know, the, the way I um, talk about filtering to, to clients or to workshop attendees is it's really about uh, reducing the noise and getting rid of the noise to focus on only the information that is applicable and helpful at any given point in time so that you can open up a project page and only see the specific tasks that are highest priority, for example. Uh, that's one of the one of the many things I love about Notion and just that customization capability where we can start to design our own workflows and our own systems based on how we work individually or how we work as a team. So there's a few uh, there's a few placeholder pieces of information just taken from my personal productivity system to give some context as to um, the first parts of this process, specifically 
What does reflection look like? What are some um, starter questions for reflecting on say the previous year? Um, and, and then also with a vision, which is really, you know, what are your purpose and principles? This could get very abstract, at least for me personally. Uh, but then when we get into goals, this we're going to start from scratch and really just look at one example to go through the process. And if at any point, uh, if I'm going too fast or you got some questions on any one of these uh, parts, definitely let me know in the chat. All right. So um, starting with reflection, we had mentioned earlier that um, to set any goals, the first thing we want to do is actually look backward to see what worked, what didn't work, and what we want to prioritize moving forward. So uh, this also in that, in that, um, oh, didn't add that. In the, I'll add the link to the blog post, but it has a link to uh, Anne Laura LeCumpf's um, template on reflection, but it break, basically breaks down what went well, what didn't go well, what's the focus for the next year. And it's broken up into different areas. So we can get a little bit more specific when it comes to personal life, health, business, teaching, et cetera. Um, so this is a good exercise where we don't have to do any planning. We don't have to do any uh, big thinking. It's just how did the year go, you know, and, and with specific guiding questions. So this process, the goal with this process is when we look at that third column, what's in focus for 2022, by reflecting, we're already getting some ideas as to what's most important moving forward and thinking you know, for the next year and beyond. So that even though we're technically reflecting, we're kind of planting the seeds of what our goals are gonna be and what our focus is gonna be for the next year. So, um, and this, this will be kind of empty in the template uh, when we share that. Just wanted to add that filled in as an example for this first part. So we've got uh, those three categories along different areas. If we move into vision, this is also something that is just assembled from a few different sources that are guiding questions to not necessarily think about a time frame or what am I doing the next quarter, or what's the next project, but just sort of, sort of evergreen ideas about who we are, what we want to focus on, and very, very general high-level uh, statements. Like what are our, you know, one or two or three words for the year to um, guide our focus and guide our, our energy. Um, so, again, yeah, we won't get too much into detail, but this got some questions on, you know, everything from what does this day next year look like to um, what are we looking forward to? But let's get into the meat of this because I do want to get through the entire um, system. So we're going to start with goals. So just some context on these databases so that we know what's connected and how they're related to each other. So first database we're looking at is goals. And if you see here, anytime you see that up to the right arrow, that means that it's being connected to another database, in this case, on the same page. So we're assigning a different area, a specific area to each goal and writing out. If you see this uh, text icon, that means that it's just plain text. It's not really connected to anything. It's more just a place to answer or to add in some notes. So we're going to, um, I'm going to add one of my goals for the year and then go through this process to see what it looks like in terms of adding, um, all of these steps. That's a big way to add them. All right. If you're just joining, welcome. Okay, so we're going to add a goal here, and one of the goals we have is uh, become a top course creator in this in the let's say space of Notion plus personal productivity. All right, cool. So again, not very specific, ambitious, at least in my opinion, um, and is not too detail oriented yet. Um, in here, we're going to assign this an area. So we'll give this, uh, this will be teaching focused. And 
this is a related database, so teaching is its own page. And uh, why and challenges, I'll leave this open just to go through the process. But if we can imagine using this, getting to the, the motivations around that goal and um, why it's a priority for you in the next year. And um, the part that I really like filling out is the challenges, like what perceived challenges do you see yourself encountering? Maybe it's a lack of time or the need to learn more about a specific domain. Um, a lot of possible challenges there, but kind of naming them, putting them on paper helps us be a little bit more prepared to, you know, face those challenges in the future. But we've got one goal set up here and we're going to move into, so in, in this example, we're treating goals as an annual goal. So a focus for the year, in this case, 2022. If we move into objectives, uh, the way we talk about objectives is very much in line with uh, an author called Brian, uh, who's named Brian Moran. He wrote the 12 week year and basically makes the argument that we should be more planning, focused on quarters and planning for each quarter versus planning for the year, mostly because it's uh, less abstract. It's easier to plan ahead three months versus 12 months and basically makes the argument that we can get a lot more done if we go from thinking yearly to thinking quarterly. So he doesn't like the term quarterly, uh, but that's why it's called a 12 week year. But this is focused on, in this case, quarter one. So how do we get this goal, become a top course creator in the space of Notion plus personal productivity? How do we start making objectives around that? So objectives, you know, if we recall from earlier, are a bit more specific time-based, um, in this case, for the first quarter. And then the next step is we're going to get into key results. How can we track our progress quantitatively? So I'm going to add an objective here called, and for the quarter one, we'll say launch three mini courses on personal productivity. And we're going to assign this the goal from above. So become a top course creator. Uh, these are some additional goals, but I just hid them for uh, just for more focus. So we've got that there. And then I'm going to assign this for quarter one. Um, also, when we get into reflection, these are this is another related database that we can open up that quarter page and filter everything from goals to objectives to projects. So we've got one goal and one objective. So we could, you know, this is the part where we could think, all right, this is pretty doable. You know, launch three courses. There are many courses. They're not, you know, full, you know, eight week um, workshops or uh, pretty attainable in terms of getting it done in the quarter. Uh, but when we get into key results, this is where we start to identify the work that needs to be done and backwards planning projects and the actions within projects that need to happen for us to get to that point of uh, successfully launching, you know, in this case, three courses. So key results here, uh, I've got some or other hidden uh, related databases hidden just so that it's um, clear to see what's connected in the databases. But if we've got key results, this is the part where we can get really insightful visuals into how we're doing and, and the progress that we're making. So if we've got any key results here, let's say a couple are, one key result is 300 course downloads. Let's try to make like three so we can get some variety. Launch three courses and these are, key results are meant to be um, measurable and as specific as possible. So um, in this case, we've got numbers that we're able to track our progress. And um, we've got execute three webinars, so one webinar per month. And let's add one more, send out six email newsletters. So one every two weeks. Um, and then we're going to, again, we see this top right arrow, which means that that's a related database. I can just highlight all of these, right click it and set the 
objective to our new one. And we've got that there. So um, we've got four key results for this one objective that feeds into that being a top course creator by the end of the year. Um, here we've got some number properties and a little mini formula, which this will be in the resource that's shared out. Just a simple visual to track our progress um, at any given time. So at the start of the quarter, we're going to start with zero for each of these. Just to keep it simple. And I want to put the number value that's the target in this property. And because we're at the start of the quarter, these are also zero. So if once we start to connect the key results database to our, if we have a weekly planner, if we have a monthly planner, or uh, a page for each quarter, we can link in this view with all of our key results, quickly um, add in values, like how much progress are we making? Maybe I didn't hit um, you know, one webinar per month, maybe I got to two. And let's say by the end of the quarter, I've got you know, 250 downloads. Maybe I did launch three courses, but only did two webinars and sent out five newsletters. With OKRs, uh, this is probably something that we're going to get into in February to dive in a little bit even more deeper because um, there's a lot in there. When we think about OKRs, the goal is actually, can we get anywhere between 70 and 85% of the goal? And if we can, uh, that's a big win. So even though we might look at something like 67% completion um, versus not having a system for tracking our goals, the differences are going to be extremely wide and kind of compounding over time when we think about several months or several years. So um, if we notice going through this process, the next step is starting to identify projects that have particular start and end dates and going one level further, what tasks uh, need to be completed from each project. And I, I think for, um, at least for me, being relatively new to managing projects in this way, it definitely was a lot more detailed than, um, than I was used to previously, um, was not a zero to one, like immediate from one day to the next process. It was very kind of gradual to get to the point where um, setting goals, setting quarterly objectives and it kind of feeling like a natural process because at the very beginning, it can feel like quite a bit to uh, take on in addition to the actual work uh, that we're trying to do. So um, if, if you're kind of feeling that where it's like, wait, this is, this is a ton of stuff and I've got I've to take a look at these numbers every week, every month, every quarter, I would definitely start with uh, just the goals part. And, um, you know, doing a reflection exercise at the very minimum and um, trying to incorporate some of these uh, strategies organically and little by little, because the main thing we want to avoid is um, feeling that overwhelm and feeling like we're tracking way too much information um, and haven't given ourselves the time to, to really uh, adopt like new, new methods and new um, processes. So um, cool. Ali's got a question. How many objectives per quarter do you recommend? So if we um, go back up here, uh, the, if we zoom out one level higher into goals, goals, um, if we assign them by area, we definitely want to avoid having more than like two or three goals per area, mainly because it starts to kind of divide our time and attention and energy and we're not going to be able to make significant progress on, on all of those fronts. When it comes to objectives, um, this may be a process of going back and forth between goals and objectives. If we set out a goal, for example, and then you get into identifying quarterly objectives and start to realize that there's a lot there, or to meet that goal, I've got to kind of drop everything else and set out to, for these eight objectives you may find yourself saying, all right, maybe I can kind of tweak this goal 
still wanted to be ambitious, but you also wanted to be within your means, especially when it comes to time. And, uh, you know, time is the most valuable resource and really going back and forth on those two. Um, can't really give you a number on the number of objectives, but uh, the same thing goes for once you've set out with objectives and start to map out, okay, what projects need to be done in what order, how much time do I have? Um, that'll give you some more insight as to whether these objectives are manageable for the quarter and if they need some reworking or, or not, you know, and I think the, the beauty of the, these types of systems is that you could focus in uh, on you're starting up a, a new process in January, you get to the end of January and you start, you've identified some things that work and don't work and can make adaptations based on that. Um, and, you know, make little improvements that are gradual, but really have a compounding effect over time. So hopefully <laughs> it's a long winded answer to your question, but um, hopefully that's helpful. You know, one other recommendation I would make is uh, really just starting with one goal. You know, what's one big goal for the year and trying to make our way through this process to see um, as, as a kind of a mental exercise, especially if um, we're new to some of these types of systems like OKRs or um, like projects and tasks, things like that. Cool. Um, any other questions? on this. So, oh, um, want to get into the last, maybe the most important part of this um, system. So if we scroll down a little bit. Um, we've got this last section called tracking. And in this example, we're looking at monthly planning and reflection. Although this is something that you could very well do on a weekly basis and definitely on a quarterly basis. So if we, and to zoom out and to give some context, um, this is taken from the manifest OS template. And in that template, there's databases for days, weeks, months, and quarters, so that they're all kind of connected and pre pre built with their own templates so that uh, you don't have to kind of manually create a new page every time you open a, um, a new day or a new week or a new month. So we go into this January page, um, I've kind of removed some of the extra parts of this page in terms of like planning and reflection, mostly taking out the projects and tasks related databases. But we've got here uh, the same key results database that we just set up in the previous um, page. So we've got a linked database, meaning this is linking to that database. It's the same uh, information and is surfacing the same information as well. So if we've got um, these values, let's say we get to the end of January and kind of added in some stuff here, but we say um, we've got three done by the end of January, we've got 120 downloads, launched a course, did one webinar, we get to this is actually old so i'm going to disregard that one that's from quarter four but if we focus on these four krs we can see our progress at the end of the month so we've got we've got 50 percent completed on the first kr 40 percent, 33 percent, and so on so kind of instantaneously with you know adding in four values you can start to get a visual on the progress that you've made over the course of the month i know at least personally it could very quickly forget, you know, quick like wins or accomplishments from even the past week. So having this reflection process just helps to ground the work and also look ahead into the next month in terms of, okay, maybe I need to prioritize um, making sure that the second webinar makes some improvements and um, make some adjustments based on the previous one. So, you know, and again, this is something that can happen at the weekly level uh, when you get into task planning and, and prioritizing specific tasks. But um, so one of the kind of awesome things about Notion is just being able to link these databases virtually anywhere and 
you know, also filter it to show only the information that we want to see. So speaking of filtering, if I can just uh, set up a filter and I want to only show the key results from this new objective, which is launching three mini courses. Uh, now I can just see those by themselves. So, you know, that's just a quick look at what the monthly review looks like. So we're gonna head back to that main page up here. So again, the key takeaways from here are um, starting with reflection and then using those takeaways to start setting up goals for, for the year and really just getting uh, more and more granular in terms of um, how do I go from this big ambitious goal to daily actions or uh, projects to be completed in you know, certain timeframes. So um, just a quick view on that. Any other questions? If not, I'm gonna jump into the course really quick. I'm gonna pull up the slides. One second. Okay, so um, we'll have some time for Q&A also uh, last 10 minutes or so, uh, but I also wanted to quickly um, plug the course that's launching on the 24th and give a quick breakdown as to uh, what's involved in the course and what resources in addition to some of these things that we talked about today uh, are going to be included in the course. And this is the first course of 2022. Uh, that goal that we went through as an example is an actual goal of mine. So um, you'll probably be seeing some more of these throughout the course of the year, but the, um, key things that are happening. So it's a seven day email based course. So each day has a specific focus, for example, the first one being reflection, um, including some of these templates that we looked at, but also going a little bit deeper into the process of turning that reflection process into, um, goals that are actionable, that are specific, and that really kind of tick off those boxes of being ambitious, but also being attainable and some guidelines on those. And then followed by things like, you know, setting up a vision to, you know, further personalize your goals and then really getting into the nitty gritty parts of setting up key quarterly objectives and key results. Um, if you are new to Notion, there's also some context for how these databases are working together uh, how some of the formulas are working and maybe how to customize those as well so that you're setting these up and you're able to plug and play, but also be, being able to kind of customize to your you know, personal workflow. There's uh, two other resources that are included in the course as well, which are the, the Notion template, uh, an expanded version of the one that we went through today. And then also the goals playbook, which um, also provides some more kind of research based information and context for um, approaching goals and objectives in this way. So kind of allows us to dive a little bit deeper and to you know, look at some more um, science and data around these strategies and how they work and how they're applied in business and how they could be applied as a solo creator or as someone who's leading a small team. So um, that's going to be going out on the 24th. And, um, you know, I'll definitely reach out with an update on that. But um, very excited for that. So um, any questions on anything from goals, OKRs, using Notion, pretty much opening the floor um, for the time that we have.
And again, with questions, you can add them in the chat. You can, uh, I think you can unmute as well. Uh, are the goals from the course the same that are in the manifest template? Are the goals from the course? Um, so they work um, exactly the same. Yeah, so the, the actual goal that we set up in the example is new, but if we, um, I can probably pull up the uh, actual template, um, but in terms of how they're connected, uh, they are exactly the same. So, um, you know, it's kind of taken from the manifest template and um, really meant to be a focused, focused look at that. So I'm gonna pull that up in a moment. So this is, the, this is kind of a look at the manifest template. Um, and you know, some of the things I mentioned were that in addition to setting goals and managing projects, you're getting things like tracking um, your things like habits or um, you know, journal entries, these sections. So it's also really meant to be like, how can we get all of these components into one view? and in a space that's not overwhelming and can be focused. So if uh, we go up here, there's a space for adding you know, personal affirmations. You can capture quick notes, any journal entries. Um, if we go into one of these uh, days, each day has a kind of a template where you can add in information like um, specific journal entries that are tagged, um, what actions are due that particular day, and um, also tracking things like if you're tracking your reading or if you're tracking your um, exercise, it's pulling in data from there as well. So um, that's the quick overview on the manifest template. And I just did a walkthrough last week on, on kind of like how it works and what are the pieces. Um, that are really kind of trying to get the most out of Notion's new features, for example, like the subgrouping where you can see um, tasks organized by status, which is pretty typical, but also subgrouped by uh, projects, which is pretty interesting. So also we've got a section for projects is like using that timeline view, what projects are up and running. Um, dashboards for different areas. We had mentioned dashboards in the example earlier. And um, systems, this is kind of like making sure that every high level database is organized in the same place and um, kind of easily accessible. So, you know, breaking these down by um, life databases, work, time, uh, knowledge management, and file management. So, uh, could be a lot if without a system, especially if you're uh, doing this much in Notion. So worth uh, worth the extra organization and, and um, filtering there. All right, any other questions about goals, objectives? Notion, manifest. Cool, I'm, uh, I'm gonna drop in a few links in the chat. Uh, first one is if you wanna take a look at and learn more about the course that's launching on the 24th, uh, that'll take you directly to that page. And then also um, dropping in my email newsletter that goes out on average every two weeks, um, but focuses on personal productivity in Notion. So a combination of um, topics around productivity like goal setting and like uh, journaling or project management and specifically like some strategies that could work and some new interpretations of these strategies in Notion. So um, you can check that out as well. And I think that's about it. So um, yeah, I just wanna give you a quick shout out. Thanks for being 
with me and with us for on a Friday. Um, so really appreciate the, uh, the support and your time and really hope that was helpful. Uh, if you want to connect on social media, uh, whether it's like Twitter, Instagram, uh, you can definitely reach out. It's at Notion Coach. And um, also one last thing, if you want to reach out via email, you totally can. It's Dave at the notioncoach.com. Uh, if you've got any questions about this, about the course, about any templates that I've um, created, happy to chat, happy to connect with uh, all of you. And um, yeah, I hope uh, I hope we set some set some big goals and make some plans on on how to execute. So on that note, have a great weekend and uh, maybe see you in the next next webinar. <laughs>